Oh, perfect. That's what we've been uh, looking at here too on, on other editions and then the workouts is trying to say, make, make those habits stick, work on yourself now. Don't waste this time. You've been gifted this time. Like you said, uh, we have it now. It's a matter of how we use it and how we apply things. And do we use it dwelling on things and watching the news and being so inundated with stuff? Or do we actually chunk that time out for ourselves and for our families and for these different events? Uh, and then um, looking at ways to, to keep that in. So I've started uh, talking a bit about the transition now until post pandemic, I've been calling it for lack of a better term. Um, obviously, again, it's, it's no uh, kind of guarantee of when that's going to come. But what I've been trying to um, pers give as a message is to start planning now for post pandemic, kind of like you said, if there's game nights, if there's workouts, if there's you time you've been doing, put those things in now, look at your schedule kind of the way it used to be and put those things into place. And then you can tweak the plan uh, if you want to going forward. And I understand you've got some, some programs coming up and some uh, really good philosophy about this. I'm wondering if you just want to, to kind of wrap up, we'll talk about that, how we're going to transition out of this and what you're kind of looking for uh, going ahead. Well, you know, transitioning into it, my message to people uh, was, you know, we keep hearing step out of your comfort zone. And I think we all know what that means by now. It, it means that we're living the comfort of our discomfort. We, we hate our life, but pays the bills. Everything's good. It's fine. I'd rather be miserable than have to deal with the hassle, confusion, overwhelm of trying to change my life. That's the simple. We live in the comfort of our discomfort. And so we all understand what it means to get out of our comfort zone. Well, coming into this COVID crisis, especially right after March, uh, March break, we were all removed from our comfort zone, whether we liked it or not. So my message to people was, okay, you're out. Let's do this. Let's get on it. Let's change this. Let's make it happen now. Now everything you feared and wanted to avoid has happened anyway. So are you going to sit there in the corner and go, until it goes back? Or are you going to take the time to make a change? So now we're on the other side now. And I mean, we're, we're really not just on the threshold. We're not on our way out. As I just said, we've got time, but we are transitioning to the next phase and people are starting to have the eye on the future, the new normal, the old normal, whatever it is people think is coming, whatever people hope are coming. And now I want you, I want to invite you to think about it as you got out of your comfort zone, you made your changes, you, know, you did your thing. And now you're getting ready to phase over here. Some of you have put some things in place. Your new normal is going to be a different life. Maybe in just a couple of ways. That's great. That's fantastic. You've already set the seed and, and it'll, it'll grow. It'll work. It'll be great. Some of you have been sitting by complacently, counting the minutes, waiting for it to go back, even though you're the ones who yelled the loudest about how much you hate your life and how much it sucks. So shame on you, but it's not too late. Because now what I want you to think about on this side is, for the last two, three, however many weeks, you've struggled, you've worried, you've even feared, but you've had a taste of freedom. Because even at the greatest level of fear and panic, somewhere you had to look around and gone, well, at least I don't have to go to work tomorrow, <laughs> right? Even if you were worried about where's the damn paycheck coming from, you have to have enjoyed being at home. If you're somebody fortunate enough to have collected some or you know, maybe half of your salary, something, some portion of it, a little something, in between figuring out how to stretch that money, you have to have still been enjoying, hey, there's money coming in. There's food on the table. There's some in my belly. My family's all here I'm watching a lot of my favorite shows. <laughs> and this is good. It's not perfect because to be perfect, I'd be living this life and making a comfortable living. <laughs> but you've got a sense. You've got, you've got the taste, right? You've, you've sampled the drug. And that's the last time I'll use the word drug to describe it. But let's face it, really. It's a good thing to be addicted to. Freedom, joy, abundance in your life. You've got a taste. Now you're going, oh. Some of you are dreading going back to work. A lot of you probably are. Because, yeah, it would be nice to have the paycheck back. But look at everything you're going to give up for that paycheck. So what I want to really invite you to do is think about how much changed in your life and how little changed. Because what drastically changed in your life was your lifestyle.
your sleeping habits, your health, your family dynamic, right? Everything is really important. What changed a little in your life? Your paycheck. Even if you don't get anything, which is pretty hard right now. I mean, the benefits are, are pretty good, you know. But even if, I know some people really unfortunately fell through the cracks and got shortchanged. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm doing fairly well this year. Thankful. Thank you very much. I'm blessed. I'm, 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 I'm so, so pleased that I am. I was not terribly profitable last year. So I have money, didn't make any, and so I kind of fall through the cracks because they assess how much should you be making based on what you made last year. <laughs> so I'm making more than I was. Bye bye. So and I'm okay with that. There's people who need a lot of help, need help a lot more than than me. Absolutely, and I'm blessed that I'm having a lot of opportunities arise, and some of my money is being made because I'm helping people right now in this moment. Uh, and I'm also helping people at no charge in this moment as well. I'm, 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 I'm doing what's needed, and I'm very blessed to have that situation. But I am somebody who is not seeing the same income that I once did. And so I do understand that. But even if you went from making you know, this much to making that much or nothing or, or whatever it was in between, I want you to understand that it was actually a small transition. Right? It wasn't it, that wasn't as huge an adjustment in your life as all the lifestyle things were. And as much as you, you, you may have panicked about the money, mostly to deal with the money, all you had to do was scramble and do some research. Oh, does that sound familiar? <laughs> when I was talking about your finance, research, research, that's what it is. Look into it. There's money everywhere because Money makes the world go round. It's what our world is all about. It shouldn't be, but it is. And so even someone like myself who, you know, I want to help people, I want to serve, I want to make the world a better place. That's true. I'm not just paying lip service when I say those things. I really do. Well, because of the planet I happen to live on with those ideals, making money is something I have to worry about. As Walt Disney said, I don't make movies to make money. I make money so I can keep making movies. And... It's true of any dream that you have, any goal, any legacy you want to create for yourself, whatever it is. You'll have to make money because that's what you got to do to do what you want to do. And it's as simple as that. But because of that, money's everywhere. There's always a way you can find some money. You just don't want to because it's uncomfortable to walk away from this thing that you've settled into. I got my budget set. I got anything going. People don't like change. Well... The world has changed. So whether you like change or not, you've been slapped with a whole pile of it. And your life has changed, your family, your household, everything has changed as a result. What hasn't changed that much? The money. And that's what you need to put into perspective. I know it's a scary thought to just say, so the paycheck is the easy thing to walk away from? Yeah, yeah it is. The difficult thing to walk away from is the freedom that you've been living for the last little while. And if you choose to, it will be gone. If you choose the paycheck over the freedom, it will be gone. It's not going to pop up one more time and go, you want to try again? <laughs> Once you relinquish freedom, it's lost. It's gone forever. You relinquish money, you can get it back. It's painful <laughs> to lose money. You get it back. Come on. If you're, if you're over 15, you've lost some money. And you know you got it back. You recovered. You figured it out. You ever given up freedom? You ever relinquished something special in your life? You ever given up on a dream? Did you get it back? I don't think so. Remember, you've had a taste. You've had an experience of the really powerful thing. Freedom. The freedom to be yourself. Do what you want, when you want, with who you want. All you have to do is just tidy up that small missing factor, make a comfortable living at it. In fact, if you can live a life like the one you've been living the last couple of weeks, absent the worry, the doubt, and the fear, I dare say you'd be willing to work for a little less money than you're making right now. You'd probably take a significant cut in that paycheck if you knew you could live like this. And if you live like this, it won't take long before you build that back up anyways, and you'll very quickly be making more money than you were originally anyway. But you have to get past the fear. Well, there shouldn't be that much fear left. 
you've confronted it. You've dealt with it. There shouldn't be that much fear left. You should be able to run with this now. And next Thursday, I'm going to be uh, doing a webinar called New World, New Me. And for short, I call it the New World Webinar, which is kind of cool. I'm an ELO fan, you know, and their album, The New World Record, you know, one of their greatest. So I love that. I'm doing the New World Webinar. But the real title is New World, New Me. Because, hey, we forfeited our new year, right? It was supposed to be New Year, New Me, the greatest ever, 2020. Perfect vision, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we had so many great ideas and things. And then... <laughs> So, hey, how about new world, new me? When we come out of this into the new normal, new world, new me. There's a new world out there. Priorities have changed. Functions have changed. Everything's changed. You should too. So, you know, get in there and get on it. And I want to give you a little bonus here, a little little freebie. And I, and I know Patrick knows what I'm going to say here. I have been preaching since 2019 to everybody that, 2020 was the end of the previous decade, not the beginning of a new one. Okay, our number system goes from one to ten, period, end of story. Okay, there's no two thoughts about nothing, there's no year zero, end of discussion. Okay, it is a fact that it goes from one to ten. The beginning of the next decade is whatever end one, so 2021. And everybody argues with me, I let it go this year. Because people said, we're just really excited about the 2020s. So we want to go ahead and make 2020 the first year. Well, how are you feeling about that now? And I don't say that to mock you. I don't say that to have my little victory. I say that because I'm going to invite you to jump on the wagon with me now. And go ahead with 2021 is the beginning. Because we're going to kind of write this one off, aren't we? So let's go ahead and say, screw it. According to you know math and facts and history... Next year's the beginning of the new decade. Mulligan, do over. <laughs> we're going to go with Blake and say 2021. So we're going to have the fresh start. We're going to go ahead and do it. That's what we're doing. 2020 was the end of the other one. Good riddance. <laughs> and, and we're going to start fresh. And then just hope that COVID doesn't come back again next year. Because <laughs> that's not really going to screw this up. But if it, is, if it does, please learn now from all we've done take advantage if it does repeat itself make sure you don't repeat yourself rise above it and be ready if it doesn't come back and if it doesn't then get ready because it's going to be a beautiful ride 2021 can be everything we want 2020 to be it's just instead of 2020 it's 2021 nice i like that um and yeah that's what i've been saying uh to you again to, to think of it is is uh my goal for my community and part of having you on and some other guests i'm going to have on is to make my community, my tribe better. We all rise up so that if this comes back in a wave or everyone says that there's something else out there that's going to come, it doesn't have the effect on us that this did. We're stronger immune-wise. We learn from the experience, just like I've realized, uh, like we mentioned before in talks, that my past experiences helped me deal with this. So I was prepared for this moment. So I could hop on here and be more in a leadership role because of what I've been through uh, in the past. So learn from this experience, move forward, build yourself up professionally, personally, health-wise, whatever, so that when then something else comes or this happens to come back, it doesn't have the effect on us that this time had. We don't shut down as much. There's not as many people sick because we've taken the onus like we started with on ourselves to make ourselves that much better. Um, so again, I love hearing that, that message and that we're both, uh, as usual, it seems, on the same wavelength and, and on the same, uh, same ride going on. So uh, again, you heard it here, 2021 is the new start of the decade, not not this year. It's our mulligan, it's our do-over, it's our control-alt-delete. Uh, get rid of that one. Uh, 2021 is going to be... 2020 with the wink. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be, that's right, winky for everyone. I, you know what? Uh, people ask about a new, I think I said it to you too, our new greeting. I've said our new greeting is going to be the wink in the gun. I'm bringing that back. So the 2021 with the little winks, it's all tied together. That's so right. you heard it here first, gang. That's going to be uh, the new the new way to say hello. That's going to be the new uh, decade is 2021. So uh, yeah. again, uh, thanks so much, Blake, for hopping on here. I appreciate having you in and having your advice. And, and um, it just really quickly, I guess if people want to touch base with you, want to sign up for uh, your new year, new you, or follow you online, where can they uh, reach out to you and where can they find you? 
You can find me at uh, on Facebook at N2L Transformations. That's the best way to, to find me. I'm really active on the page right now, more than I ever have before. I'm getting very good at it. This is an old guy getting finally going on social media because it's the best way to reach people. Huh. So it's N2L, as in never too late with the number two, Transformations. Uh, if you have trouble finding it, go to just me, Blake Miles. On my profile, there's links over to it all over the place. Um, and it's uh, it's it's open public uh, page, so you can jump on there, and there's lots of information uh, about it. And uh, yeah, just uh, you, there's a uh, send a message cl- uh, button that I put on. It's the first time I've tried it actually, so just click on that, and it opens up a messenger thing, and just uh, reach out to me directly. And don't worry, nobody's gonna try to sell you anything. All right, it's not like that. It's not like that. In fact, it's uh, I'll warn you now. Uh, if you've heard enough of me yamming away, uh, if you come out on Thursday night, you're going to hear a lot of what you heard tonight. So, <laughs> but we will go more in depth and with pictures. Yeah, so, <laughs> you could have brought you pictures. Would... I didn't say, but you oh, there you go. So, <laughs> yeah. So that's the best way. Um, if I can send everybody out with one sentence that can sum up all of what we've talked about tonight and all of what I wish and hope for everybody in the next few days, weeks, and months. Uh, it's to quote Abraham Lincoln or Peter Drucker, depending on where you want to put it. But the best way to predict your future is to create it. Love it. And that's, uh, I can't follow that up. So that's, uh, we'll end it there. Uh, again, thanks so much for, for hopping on here, Blake. I really appreciate it. Uh, I know you've got a lot going on right now. Uh, I'll tag uh, Blake's page in the, in the comments when I post it as well. So you've got that uh, to reach out to him and see. Uh, or you can reach out to me and I can provide the, uh, the contact there if it's, if it's not working out for you uh, as well. So uh, once again, thanks so much, Blake. And if you're okay with it, actually.